Welcome to our lecture online. So let's try to understand a little bit more about mutual coupling and understand what the maximum value of that coupling can be. Well, here's a way to approach it. So let's go to what we call an opposing connection because in that case we're going to write the total energy of the system like this where this is due to the inductance of the first inductor, the inductance of the second inductor, and then of course the mutual inductance between the two inductors. And since it's now a negative, we know that this whole value should always be greater than zero. There's at least zero or more than zero amount of energy. You can't have negative energy in a system. Of course, if this is a plus, then you know that everything is a plus and that always is going to be greater than zero. So the limiting factor can be found by making this a minus and therefore an opposing connection. Now when you look at this equation right here, of course the first two terms absolutely have to be bigger than or equal to zero because we have the current squared so this is automatically going to be positive and that means that this would have to be bigger than zero but that is not a good way to approach it. We can do a little bit better by doing the following. What we can do is first of all let's multiply both sides of the equation by two or the inequality by two to get rid of these one halves and then we're going to subtract this term and add this term. Now this negative times this negative makes this positive and so we're adding it here and subtracting it there. It's a mathematical trick, an algebra trick, so that we can then take these three terms and factor it into a binomial squared. So now that we have this written as a binomial squared, I guess that's the reverse of factoring, and that, I guess that's what it would be. So what we do is we, we then go ahead and write it as a binomial squared, and notice that since it's now a binomial squared, this whole binomial will always be greater than zero. So that's not the limiting factor. That means that the remaining term right here must be greater than or equal to zero. Now this negative in front is a little bit bothersome, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that times what's inside the brackets, we're going to turn these two around, so now we got rid of the negative sign, and what we can then say is for this whole thing to be greater than zero, or equal to zero, what's inside the bracket must be greater than or equal to zero. And then when we take the magnetic coupling and move it to the other side, it will now look like this. The magnetic coupling must be smaller than or equal to the square root of the product of L1 and L2. Or we could write as an equal sign by writing m is equal to some constant times the square root of L1 and L2. And that constant will be some value between 0 and 1 if m is to be smaller than or equal to the square root of L1 times L2. Now k is then, is then what we call the coupling coefficient. It can be anywhere from 0 when there's no coupling at all to 1 when you have maximum coupling, 100% coupling between two inductors. Neither, of course, are likely. Some, it's usually somewhere in between, and the value of k will give you an indication of how much coupling there is. When you have k greater than 50 percent, 0.5, that's a pretty strong coupling between the inductors. When k is maybe 0.05 or something like that, then there's fairly weak coupling. So it has to do with how much of the magnetic field of the one inductor penetrates the coil of the, of the other inductor and the more they penetrate one another, the more there's mutual coupling, the greater the value for k. But we, we know that k cannot be more than one. In other words, you cannot have greater mutual coupling than you have self-inductance. Self-inductance is all you've got, and the maximum amount of mutual coupling you can have occurs when k equals one, where m is equal to the square root of L1 times L2. And that's the limiting value of the mutual coupling.